Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our co-host today is Jace Lejeune. Jace is here uh, sitting in. Uh, we're going to talk a little recruiting. Yeah, uh, great we, to be back. I know Jace went to Southeastern, but we're not talking about Southeastern today. We will mm-hmm. another day. And actually, yeah. today's going to be LSU and McNeese State. Uh, we're going to talk about Coach Gary Golf, the new coach from Valdosta State, going to McNeese. They did a phenomenal job. We'll talk about that. I'll give my grade of LSU and Coach Kelly and his staff. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to be negative. It's different between negative and blunt, don't you think, Jace? Just being yeah. blunt. Right. Um, and then we'll talk about in general. Voice of reason. Yeah, that's, what I call, that's what they call my dad anyway, I play Ackman, right. voice of reason. I still think we're in a country where people want the truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, and then uh, from here on out, we're going to do shows – where it'll just be me talking about some of the other colleges. We'll pick Tulane and ULM and Grambling and Southern, McNeese, Northwestern. You know, we're sure. going to keep – and choose the show next week. Is it going to be who, Jace? Uh, it's going to be Mass and Prep Coach, uh, Coach Landry Williams. Oh, and uh, he's had a pretty good two-year run. I mean, they won the state championship last year. But talk about some of the great players that they've signed that went to college and yeah. Quincy Wiggins and uh, – and Zeon Chris, and both of them are enrolled. And it really shows you the program. I remember one time he brought, I mean, you just signed me to go to the high school. It just shows you. Uh, he was, like, doing recess duty for the middle schoolers. Yeah. And you saw, I saw the middle schoolers walking around. Uh, Mass and Prep, they're not going anywhere uh, soon. because no, they're loaded. When, they are loaded. Well, the main thing, they got to get the quarterback, the greatest quarterback to ever play there is Chris. Yeah. He's going to UL. Mm-hmm. And you can't replace him. No. Now, you can have a good team, but he was one of the best quarterbacks in the country, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. He's going to UL in Lafayette. They got him a steal. Could very de- he could definitely be the starter day one I think, next I, year. I think he will be. Uh, Desimo got a great – he held on to him, and I, I thought he was going to have to go to Florida. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Chris from Madison Prep, his, we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about – uh, the LSU DB from Madison Prep, a uh, major. Right, Burns. right, major Burns, and yep. They have a DB at Kentucky that's starting at Madison Prep. They got mm-hmm. Quincy Wiggins coming in to LSU. We got, there's a guy, they got a ton of players playing oh, yeah. all over the country. So we're going to talk about that Tuesday. That's our TV podcast with Landry Williams. And we might have another guest. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. What happens between now and Tuesday. But let's go ahead and take a break. Uh, and when we come back, we'll start talking about LSU, and then we'll get to McNeese State after that. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You listen to Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. Our co-host today is Jace Lejeune, our publisher of Louisiana Football Magazine, Check out LAFootballMagazine.com, our website, articles every day by our interns. We've got a lot of interns writing for us right now. And I want to give a plug coming off our break to Gage. We appreciate their business and their sponsorship. has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help you with your business Get better connected with Gage. And they also also sell generators for your house or your business. You know, that hurricane season's always around, Jace. It seems like it's not going away anytime soon. And No, you have to be prepared in Louisiana and for I, it. And I am going to get a uh, – I'm going to have to buy one of those babies pretty soon, too, from, from Gage. They do a great job. Family-owned, the Wood family, great people. It's never too early to get one. No. It, it actually, there's a backlog getting them in. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes four to six months to get some of these generators in for homes and businesses. You know, they come in all sizes. But uh, let's start with LSU, Jace. I started falling recruiting in 1977. I was young. My dad was a big coach like your dad. And everything he would read, I'd get it after. And I would read Athlons and, you know, I'd read – Lindsay's magazine and you know we'd follow it me and my dad and 
Uh, we kept up with the players come out of Louisiana, and every year Louisiana's got great players. Uh, here's, here's my take on LSU. Kelly was not responsible for, you know, everything that went south prior to him. A lot of guys left. You know, like Kelly said, you know, sometimes you're going to have good players leave the program, players that need to leave the program when there's a ch- coaching change. Yeah. It just happens. Mm-hmm. With that being said, truly, they did really good early on and got uh, Will Campbell to sign from Neville, who's a generational lineman. Emory Jones is a uh, generational lineman from Catholic High Baton Rouge. Walker Howard is a generational quarterback. And that's your that's your cornerstone. That is your your future, right? That, that's your leaders. And you then, couldn't afford to lose those guys because they no, were committed from LSU no. day one. And you, those are Louisiana guys that were not just good, but and actually they're not even ranked where they should be. Walker Howard, I'm not a star guy, you know that, Jace. But if you have a five star system, how did he go to a four? I still don't understand that. That's one. just come on. That's yeah. goofy. He he's as good as anybody in the country, and then they. They, they they rank him after the season to a four? Come on. Come on, people. No. So, anyway, LSU got, you know, if he's a five, right, the class is probably yeah, three right. classes better. Yeah. I don't get into this. But, anyway, they didn't go and lose everybody. But here's where they lost the boat. Here's where they – it was a great opportunity lost. I thought it was the best year ever for running backs for Louisiana in my 30 years. LSU lost on every running back. Yeah, they did. And that's going to come back to haunt them down the road. Not that, not next year because they got Noah Kane coming in from mm-hmm. Penn State. Right. He's a Baton Rouge native. Yep. We you still got, have Emory. Got Emory. You got Bradford, mm-hmm. who, who's a good player, who sat out, played, wasn't ready from Oklahoma, originally signed with LSU. And then you got the two backs, Corey Kiner. Right. And yep. the other kid from Alabama that played a little bit. They need to get mm-hmm. better, obviously. So they have backs, but. It's going to come back to haunt LSU to see Citizen playing at Miami. Yep, you at, have A.J. Allen and Nebraska. Etienne at Florida. Mm-hmm. You've got several others in the class that are going to be really great running backs. And they couldn't get any of them. And, and what really sticks out to me is that Frank Wilson was hired, who just coached McNeese State in Lake Charles. Two of the best running backs in the country were in Lake Charles. Lake Charles, yep. Etienne at Jennings. Citizen at Lake Charles Prep. And Frank could not help him pull this off. Yeah, I'm just That's being I'm just being blunt. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not a good look, but yeah. um, I thought that him coming in would help sign those kids. Yeah, I mean, I get Etienne because you know, just for whatever reason, him and his family they just yeah. never they never been great, but you still, know, LSU guys. You but got, Citizen would have been you gotta, yeah, been you, good to you get. You got a coach in Mc, at McNeese. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, he knows those coaches. It's all about relationships. Yeah. That was a missed opportunity. The running back position was just loaded. I could name 10 other running backs that are coming yeah. out of Louisiana. Yeah, we just come off, came off a show yeah. doing that. Tons of great players. So that's going to stick. And then Alabama came in and raided Louisiana. And yeah, that was bad, too. I mean, and someone like you can really argue like three of the top players in the whole state went to Alabama. Yeah. I mean, with Shaz Preston and well, Aaron Anderson. And, and let's be blunt. I'm going to be blunt today. Corey Raymond, who's from New Iberia, mm-hmm. would have got Danny Lewis because yeah. he's from New Iberia. Right. And the head coach at Westgate's best friends with Corey Raymond. They mm-hmm. grew up together. So when you lose Corey Raymond on the staff to Florida – you're not guaranteed to get those kids. Mm-hmm. Now, moving forward, you know, Antoine's a great guy. Yeah. They're going to still get those kids from Westgate. It's just in between the coaching change with Corey right. Raymond not being kept or he, you know, leaving the floor. Yeah, Westgate's maybe. always been a right. pro LSU right, type right. of school. But I'm just saying if Corey Raymond would have stayed, mm-hmm. you'd probably get Danny Lewis from, from New Iberia. Uh, Alabama, in my opinion – Oversigned too many Louisiana skill guys. Somebody's mm-hmm. gonna be unhappy in the end. Yeah, um, that's three skill guys they signed, including three. Kendrick Law. Yeah, I think Kendrick Law is gonna be a cornerback for a statement, and he'll be a great one. Um, I think Aaron Anderson is this incredibly a generation. That was guy. the one I was like, <sighs> oh man, and man. then and Chaz too. I, I, Chaz, I, would really, I thought Chaz was the best yeah. skill guy in the state. Mm-hmm. 
Chaz Preston's going to be a first-round pick. That's going to be yeah. painful. And remember you heard it on this show. He's going to be a first-round pick. Aaron Anderson, it looks like the kid for the Chiefs. Uh, he he is like, to me, an exact quote of Tyreek Hill. He is. I mean, he, he's the exact quote That's of Tyreek Hill. That's painful. That's a lot. And, you know, it, it's – it's got, I don't know. It's So, LSU did get semi-wiped out in the state. They really did. But, yeah. again – they did secure Walker Howard. That you build your team around a quarterback, and which they need. They need to secure they, Walker Howard and Will Campbell, those leaders of that sign class. Emory Jones. Emory Jones. They needed those generational Louisiana guys. Their O line. They needed those two guys desperately. And then you get Quincy Wiggins to help mm-hmm. on the D line and Taiji Hill. Yeah. Louisiana guys. Yep. And they did good at linebacker. Um, yeah. They got a, a great linebacker out of Florida. A great right. player. Now they got uh, Harold Perkins. Harold Perkins. Harold did recruit. He's, he's going to help him right away. And mm-hmm. then they got, look, the transfer portal, is they got the best DBs in the country in the transfer portal. LSU did an excellent job of getting in the transfer portal. They did a phenomenal job of getting those guys from the transfer portal. Guys that were starters yeah. at other SEC schools to come well, over. I thought Argeron's staff missed on Greg Brooks from Arkansas, from West Jefferson High School, Joe Fuquay from mm-hmm. McDonald yep. 35. Yep. Those guys are phenomenal Louisiana guys coming back. The DB from UL is a great player. Yeah, Garner, uh, Kyron Lacey, Kyron the receiver. Lacey, Thibodeau. You know. Jar Bernard from Oklahoma State. It's not done. Um, LSU still needs a tight end. Yep. They still need another linebacker. And really, they need a kicker. Well, they need another kicker. Another they kicker. Signed, they signed a kicker. Yeah, another kicker just to be safe. And they need another maybe punter to come in and challenge. Mm-hmm. But they need maybe another DN rush guy for depth. They got five scholarships left. They can use these on mm-hmm. high school kids still. Okay, still some good players left, or they can go transfer because there's going to be another spring transfer group in April. Jace, a lot of guys in in April and May are going to transfer that have to finish school. You know how that works. Mm-hmm. And so there, don't be shocked if Notre Dame loses two more players to LSU. Yeah, because their graduation dates are different on some of their kids, and so come April, LSU is going to be one of the few schools with five of these left. Mm-hmm. Now they're still going to have to beat out Alabama and some other schools because they got some scholarships left too. Right, getting that the extra seven. So can Kelly go head to head and get the best tight end available in a couple of months, the best linebacker available, the best DN available, and maybe another D tackle. And maybe another guy to kick off punt. Those are freshman guys I think you can get. I think the Lola Prep kid mm-hmm. from uh, Lola Prep right. in Shreveport would be Jacob Lafitte. Would yep. be a great kickoff guy for LSU if he walked on. Mm-hmm. If LSU calls him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kicks 60-yard field goals. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I thought Colin Dupree was a guy they missed on that they didn't get as a preferred walk-on from Catholic High Baton Rouge. That was a missed opportunity. Yep. Signed with Nickel State. Yep. And speaking of Southland Conference, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about McNeese State's class. Jace, they did a phenomenal job from the, the, not being from Louisiana, not recruiting these kids mm-hmm. before. They were they came from Valdosta State in Georgia. Uh, they started recruiting these Louisiana guys brand new, like a month and a half before signing day. Mm-hmm. I thought they had one of the greatest classes in the history of the school because of all the talent available they could get, and they did a good job. So we'll be right back. We'll talk more about McNeese State. We'll be right back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. Before we go to McNeese State, I want to thank one of our sponsors, Medine's Collision Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Kincaid Avenue. Uh, the number to call there is 357-7983. Uh, Chris Medine, Dominica Medine, uh, they do a great job. They've been in business for since the 60s, Jace. Uh, anything you need on a paint job, uh, repairs to your car or truck, Uh, Give them a call again at 357-7983. That's local in Baton Rouge. They're your accident advisors, the Dean's Collision Center. Um, McNeese State, 
Jace did a phenomenal job. I've seen all these kids play that they signed in Louisiana. And I don't know where they were getting their information, but they, they, actually, they actually did a great job of evaluating in only a month and a half. But they got Philip Bradford from Washita. Oh, yeah. Man, this guy's a stud. 6'6", 290, runs a 4'8". Um, Crajon Bennett from Iowa, corner, was a great steal. Um, Cedric Applewhite that you've talked to from mm-hmm. Bozier, 6'6", yep. DN, 220. First year from basketball, great-looking kid. Hayes Krill, 6'7", 320 from St. Paul's, big-time player. Javon Davis, a sleeper from John Curtis, was a great player. Yeah, and these are guys that all these guys you mentioned, Lee, have really going on in the radar because, for example, Crajon Bennett from Iowa, everybody was talking about, you know, the guy that yeah. signed with Purdue. And I think they were looking at our shows because these are all <laughs> guys we promoted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jalen Easton from Lake Charles Prep, 6'4", 320. Uh, Greg Knox, 6'6", 290 from uh, Peabody, a good-looking O-lineman from yep. Peabody. Tyrone Hayes, we've interviewed uh, Rummel, mm-hmm. 6'3", 200-pound receiver from Rummel, really good player. Jordan Toasted, man, from Catholic High, what a great signee. Yeah. 6'3", about 230. Uh, Jarvis Newton, one of the best backs in the state mm-hmm. from Alexandria. Yep. He's one of those backs one. you talked about early uh, on. He's got NFL stuff. Joe Ward, big time player from Lake Charles mm-hmm. Prep. That's a loaded. Bob? That's a loaded team too. And get this, Macy Lewis, the big six four DN from Lafayette Christian. Yeah, I call when I call the Newman LCA game. Boy, he took over. I mean, I mean he's he can be a guy that can take over games. This is about. It's like this is thirteen out of thirteen Louisiana natives that have these guys have NFL potential. These are guys mm-hmm. that would go D one in the past, Jace. Right, and these are guys like I mean, when we talk about the star system and all that, they. I mean, these aren't guys that are really highly on the in the star system. You don't know, really hear those guys, but it really shows that this coaching staff from Valdosta State, you know, the head coach, he's done a really good job of doing his homework and really getting those guys in. I think they went. They either got one of our magazines, <laughs> or they they watched our two hour show too, uh, uh-huh. or they watched our website or something. Because these are the names I have on my list. Yeah. Uh, Bradford's going to be a starter probably year one. Mm-hmm. He's he's a freak, man. Yeah, um, and, he, and he came in from Texas, back back from Texas to yeah. Louisiana, and had himself a really good senior year. This is their best recruiting class in in many years, mm-hmm. I believe. And yeah, man, it's scary what the new coach at McNeese has done um, coming in from Valdosta State. And he also brought in a couple of transfers too, I believe, yeah, as well. He did. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the out of state guys. Yeah, I don't know right. them as well. Right. Uh, but in state, they killed it. Mm-hmm. And look, Nichols. We'll talk about Nichols State soon. And in South, they all had great groups. Yeah, because all these guys fell to one double A because they didn't have enough scholarships. D one. I mean, if you look at the Southland Conference and what they've done well, like Southeastern and Nichols and I McNeese, mean, what they do really well is get the guys that you know that go to the, the guys that go to LSU and then. You know, Louisiana Tech and all those schools, there's still a lot of talent left over in Louisiana. They do a really good job of getting the guys that, that could also play for those program, the U1 programs. Yeah. But, I mean, there's so many scholarships you can get out. So they, they, they do a good job of taking advantage of that and getting what's the best left available for, to get in state. I, I just want to mention two players that were a missed opportunity for LSU that they did not recruit hard that I thought would be great starters one day. And they're both from one high school. Do you know, can you guess what high school that would be? This is right. What LSU missed on? Yeah. Two of my, and I, this is for the whole state. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about prime time, year one, help the team out in some way or another, and they're going to be in the NFL one day. Okay. One school. One school. North Louisiana. Okay. North Louisiana. We're thinking, I know you're high on North DeSoto. Starts with an N, but not it North starts with Northwood. No, nope. Neville. Neville. Yep. They LSU missed on a D tackle. They they've always been. I don't know what it is with LSU and Neville. Yep. But Ellis went to the Raiders and yep. Tech. Yep. You know mm-hmm. Yep. They didn't recruit him. Right. From Neville. Three, yep. Some with D lineman. Don't you think they would be good with D lineman having Rashard Lawrence and all yeah. the guys that have come out? Right. For Darren Mathis went <laughs> right. to Neville. Right. Yep. So here's the next stud. Mm-hmm. Who LSU's going to have to face? Yep. His last name is Sledge. Yeah, Knee Sledge. Knee Sledge, 6'4", 310, runs a five flat, and he brings it, and he can play any position on the D line. He's going to be as good as Mathis. He's going to Auburn. Yeah. Yep. 
that's things because it's not only in the SEC, but it's in your own division. Yeah. So you're going to be seeing him every year. This is not a project kid. This is a kid ready to come in and play in your in your ten rotation guys right away in the SEC. The other kid at Neville, they call him Anthony AJ Allen, a running back was underappreciated outside of Monroe. Not mm-hmm. by me. I loved him. Oh, he's a stud. He he is a Swiss Army knife of all jack of all trades for running back. He can catch the ball. He can run between the tackles. He's he's an every down back. He can do it all. Mm-hmm. And he's five ten and a half or five eleven, but he's he's deceptively plays bigger. Yeah, he, he if you just watch him run, he's, he is, it looks like he's six three. It looks yeah. like he's like Eric Dickerson or I something. I mean, he's one ninety, but he runs like he's two twenty. Yeah, he he runs like he's way bigger than what he is. He re, he reminds me of Joseph Adai that played mm-hmm. LSU. Smooth, can hit the hole fast, plays with a vengeance. Uh, he is a smooth runner. Great hands, runs hard, and he's going to be a starter at Nebraska. Nebraska got him. And Crawford from uh, Green Oaks. Yeah, and then they also got Trey Palmer in the transfer yeah. portal too. So yeah. they got, they stole a lot of guys from LSU, and uh, and it does really help having Mickey Joseph there, guy that's yeah. familiar with Louisiana. But I mean, you, I, I always feel like you can't lose a great back or a great D lineman or O lineman in Louisiana if you're LSU. Mm-hmm. There aren't a lot of them that are that good, but Sledge. I saw a film on every team in Louisiana this past year watching scouting. Sledge was the best D tackle in the state. Now, best DN was Quincy Wiggins. Yeah. But best D tackle right. was Sledge. Uh-huh. Yep. And uh, LSU's got to do a better job in Monroe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they let DeBose go to UL, the corner from Neville, who I thought was LSU good, too. Yeah. Yep. And they went to Texas and signed a corner late. Mm-hmm. Again, you got to – I hope Kelly and them put Louisiana first. And uh, what grade do you think you gave LSU just so far of like what re- they're doing right now on high school signees or the whole class? Let's start with high school high school signees first. I give them a C minus. Okay. Okay. The only reason they don't get a D is because of Campbell, Walker, Howard, Emory Jones. Really, if you don't get those guys, a whole class is going to crumble it's because crumbled. those were the leaders of your class. Yeah. So you saved face. Mm-hmm. You you save the ability to take these uh, must have portal guys. Mm-hmm. They had to have a good portal group come in. I'm leaning into that the whole class because I thought they did an excellent job with the transfer yes. portal for the whole class. What grade did you give LSU? You know they're not done with the portal so far. And I think if they get that tight end they need, they get that extra linebacker they need, another D tackle. I give them an A right now with mm-hmm. the portal. Yeah. I think yeah. they got a chance to be an A-plus with the portal. but Determining how they finish. You know, I'm old school. I think you build a program with three, four-year guys from high school. Mm-hmm. And I think the portal was always designed to take two or three of these guys. Mm-hmm. In certain situations, the portal is good, but not to the magnitude it is right now. I think there needs to be a limit on it again. There needs to be restrictions and rules. But LSU has no choice. They had to take – this many portal guys because Kelly came in and a lot of guys left. He just, they're, they're just they're, it's I where mean, it is. really major kudos to Brian Kelly for really salvaging yeah. a, really a bad situation. So it's a one year deal mm-hmm. because they want to win now. But what are you going to do next year when you got to replace nine guys with one year? <laughs> yeah, I think so. You're going to stay kind of young again, right? The second year. Well, it's the right mentality for for Kelly. He wants to prove like this is a good way to win now, win nine games, and get the momentum back going. Then you can recruit all these yeah, high school tell kids you again. If Nussmar, if Nussmar keeps improving, he's going to play even though Brennan's back. I think you're going to have a two quarterback system. You can hold me that, but I think Nussmar can run a little bit. Last year they wouldn't let him because they didn't have enough quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. But he can run to where Brennan's a drop back guy. You can redshirt Walker, and Walker could be the future, but just wait his turn. Mm-hmm. But if Nussmeyer develops the way I think he can and Brennan stays healthy, you might win more than nine if things go your way. Right. But, again, you're going to be rebuilding after next year, and you're going to have to go out, and they're not going to give you the extra scholarships next year. It's going to be 25, mm-hmm. which yep. I think they should keep it. Uh, 32, in my opinion, for at least yeah, one more year. Right. Uh, that's just my opinion. Because everybody's really starting to, you know, 
transition and get used to the transfer portal, NIL, all should, this stuff. I think they should keep 32 from now on mm-hmm. because they're going to lose seven, eight guys uh, Because of this rule. Yeah. Right, right. Unless they make rules and change it to stop the bleeding. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I give them a, a C-minus with high school kids. I give them an A-plus. For when they are done, I really so give them about a B overall. About a B, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and you know, but they have to find a way to get Louisiana coaches back. Those those coaches in Louisiana are not happy. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of talent in Louisiana this year. Yeah, there was, and you and, talk about it a whole lot. And it was a missed opportunity. They didn't sign a lot of kids from Louisiana. That now, again, Kelly didn't have a lot of time. He hired a lot of guys on his staff, yeah. people he knew that aren't from here. I mean, it's a lot to transition over and, like, expecting a number one signing class and getting everybody with the transition. It's, it's a lot to ask, but considering everything, I thought him and the staff did a really good job. But but I'm just being blunt. The shocker was LSU not being able to turn Etienne and Citizen back to LSU from Lake Charles. Yeah. And now, Danny Lewis, you know, losing Corey Raymond, you lose mm-hmm. Danny Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. He was, you know, sometimes when you look, when you leave, you know, that new Iberia connection's kind of gone for just a little mm-hmm. bit. Yep. And then it picks back up next year. Yeah, but I'm not sure if you saw it or not, Lee, but with the Brian Kelly dancing video. Yeah. <laughs> whoever, let me just say that this is just my opinion only. Whoever advised him to do that was not a good idea. <laughs> I know everybody's into the likes and this and that. I Look. That wasn't a good idea. Yeah, and there is one. He doesn't have to do that. Yeah, to be Brian, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To, to do what he needs to do to do. L- I mean, mm-hmm. I, I just that was just not. I don't know. Whoever's advising yeah. him to do that, that was not a good idea. At least one thing to take away from it: you've seen a different side to Brian Kelly, like a, I guess like a more you know relaxed, fun side of Brian Kelly that you didn't really see at at Notre Dame. Brian Kelly didn't look like John Travolta doing that, okay? <laughs> this is not Saturday Night Fever. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is not Grease, okay? This was a coach trying to dance to get, mm. you know, some enthusiasm. But, yeah, whatever. I mean, but I, I like to hire with Brian Kelly. Mm-hmm. I like Polian and these guys he brought in. Yeah. I like they hired Joe Sloan. Yeah. Frank's going to have to really work it hard. Wilson, yeah. him and Joe Sloan being right. the Louisiana guys. And uh, Coach Davis being a Louisiana guy on the O line, but yeah. they they like their coordinator to, hires too. Yeah, they have to get Louisiana back because now you know what happens, Jay. You got all these guys signing out of state. Guess what? They're gonna try and recruit their teammates next year. Mm-hmm. You know, told to me this was told to me thirty years ago. When you lose big time players from your state, sometimes it takes years to overcome. Well, the good thing about this transfer portal, and you've seen it, we saw these guys that, you know, O didn't really go after, guys are coming back. Maybe in a year or two, LSU gets these guys back because <laughs> with full. the transfer portal, you <laughs> might get, you know, Etienne to come back or uh, a guy like that to come back because of this transfer portal. Here's you know, A.J. Big. Allen, you might get him. to. If there's a coaching change in Nebraska, you might want to come back home. You never – Never know. You can recruit these guys twice. Hey, I told Sledge on the phone the other day. I said, Sledge, I would have offered you when your junior year ended Mm -hmm. if I was LSU. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he said he had already made up his mind by the time the new staff came in. And I understand that. Yeah. Being recruited a year or two by the same guys. That's what happens. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. They just don't let the new guys sign you. And they stay with the guy that's been recruiting them the whole time. That's how this works. It's hard to go back. People think you just go back on a kid. Mm-hmm. It's not like that. No, because if, if there's been a the same coach that you've been dealing with and had conversations for like two years and all of a sudden he's can't. not there, I mean, it's different. You can't just re- all of a sudden just get that relationship right back on track when you've been talking to a, a the same coach for two years that was been recruiting you. Now, I could see this. I could see Citizen, if Miami keeps losing, you know, now they got the new coach. Everybody's pumped up, right? Mm-hmm. But every time they get a new coach at Miami, he loses and gets out of there in three years, it seems. Yep, we'll see what Chris Ball does. I know it means a lot to Chris Ball because he played there well, and he's Diaz, from there. Manny Diaz was from Miami. Yeah. It didn't yeah. work out. Right, right. There's nothing guaranteed. It's like Napier no. going to Florida. Their last two coaches were good coach. Dan Mullen was a good uh-huh. coach. Yeah. But it's, it's like they lost their mind in Florida, Jace. They, mm-hmm. they just lost it. Mm-hmm. The coach before Mullen, what was his name? Um, uh, McElwain. He was a good coach. Yeah. 
it's like when they left there, they needed therapy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is, th- am I wrong? Like, I mean, that's Mullen, what the expectations are. They had a meltdown. Mullen and the other coach had meltdowns. Mm-hmm. These were good coaches. Yeah. They were up there with – they were above Napier on, on experience. Mm-hmm. McElwain was a coordinator with Saban. National yeah. championship. They and were, Mullen had all the success at Mississippi State. And, and then – and then McElwain went to Colorado State, and they were doing great. Mm-hmm. Just like Napier being at UL, same thing. Yeah. There's no guarantee mm-hmm. you're going to win championships because somebody gives you $5 million a year or whatever it is. No, no. And it's also the expectations when you got, you know, somebody named, named Nick Saban uh, coaching at Alabama and doing what he's doing. And sometimes that, that raises the level of game for everybody else when he's winning <laughs> – constantly every year well, and everybody's just, sick of it let me just i want to mention something about jimbo fisher when we come back Texas okay A&M. yeah that'll be good because the media missed the media left something out on sec network and espn and, and i don't like that they left out the most important thing about a&m they didn't mention it mm-hmm. when we come back i want to mention it we'll be right back be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to treads and care tire company located in central the number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkey. And I want to mention three more of our great sponsors. John Harvey Toyota, looking for a used or new car call. Harvey Autos, three dealerships. They've got everything from fuel efficient compacts to luxury vehicles, even hybrids. Give them a call. They're in Bossier City in Shreveport. Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, John Harvey Toyota, great people. And also, Gross Savon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Gross Savon's Lodge, fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. They're located south of Lake Charles. Call 337-598-2357 to set up a fishing or hunting trip. And also, Treads and Care, tire company, locally owned and operated, Way back, Jace, way back. And uh, tires, brakes, every tire brand. Devin Holly's the owner. They're located on the corner of Hooper Road and Park Place Drive in Central. Give them a call. They've been in business since 1971. The number to call is 331-8144. That's 331-8144. They also have free pickup and delivery, and they have any tire that you need at Treads and Care Tire Company. I want to mention something. I watched Jimbo Fisher have a meltdown on national oh, TV. Oh, yeah, okay. I saw it too. Let me just mention this. A lot of people aren't jealous that he had the number one class. Mm-hmm. They've just figured out the obvious. It's let, just let me, how he acquired the let, number one class. Let me, let me just say this. The SEC Network and the ESPN and the narrative they did, they left out the most important thing when they were interviewing Jimbo Fisher. They just went eight and four. They just went eight and four on and, the season. And that lost is the not, LSU's worst okay. team they probably ever had. <laughs> Why are we changing the narrative in football when it doesn't exist? The, the, the media is saying it's an up-and-coming program. Mm-hmm. Hear me out. They went eight and four. Mm-hmm. If they would have played a bowl game, they would have went eight in five because they had all these guys mm-hmm. announced that they weren't going to play, like yep. LSU. Yep. Well, they decided they didn't want to go eight and five. Well, they're selling something I'm not buying. When you Here's what I've known in recruiting, Jace, my whole life. When you go eight and four on the season and you finish number one in recruiting in the country, something's wrong. Yeah. Now, if you go if you go twelve and zero, I get it. Mm-hmm. If you're in the playoffs or you're playing for national championship, right. I get it. I understand they beat Alabama, mm-hmm. but LSU won a national championship two years ago. So what? Mm-hmm. Okay, boom, boom, boom. They went eight and four. His average season wins losses in four years is about four losses. It a was year. pretty much the same as Kevin Sumlin. I mean, eight yeah. and four, I spent, but, that's pretty much what he did at Texas but, A&M. But I think I speak for the common man out there. Why are they saying the narrative that the, the program's up and coming? I have nothing against a and I'm just a media guy giving my opinion. Mm-hmm. When you go eight and four, there's nothing great about that. And I think as the SEC Network is, 
was searching for its like next star and overcome overcome the hump, you uh, know. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Georgia, like Georgia was yeah, kind of that yeah. for SEC network. They didn't they go. Were, they didn't go eight and four though. Like, you yeah, know, four. right. They're trying to make A and M like the next Georgia, like being the media darling, and, like that team that can and, finally overcome the and hump Jimbo and do it. Jimbo shouldn't have got like that because something, you know, you don't do that when you're confident. You don't go crazy like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get why he's trying to defend his coaches and like and all yeah. that, but that's not – it wasn't because of the hard work of their staff that got them the number one class in the country. All I got to Let's say – Let's just say that. I'll just say that. I'm going to say it again. They went 8-4. and four. In mm-hmm. 2020, lost to LSU's One. worst team, probably. Yes. <laughs> they've they've had they in an A and M lost to that so, team. So none of this was brought up though, in the conversation. And I I heard him say that uh, have you ever been in an A and M game? Yeah, I'm I'm sure it's great with the 12th mm-hmm. man, but a lot of stadiums have great games. Georgia, LSU, Florida, mm-hmm. it's great, packed, loud. You know, it's all the same. Well, they are the most underachieving program in college football. I mean, the resources, and, and the stadium. I mean, you think that they would do much more than what they what they do. Well, here's the deal. He's going into year five. The pressure's on him. And if they go eight and four again, what's going to happen to all this? You saw it happen in LSU. Mm-hmm. Yep. Scatter. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're going to go eight, but I'm just saying they're not destined to be 12 and 0. Bama's yeah. not going down anytime soon. Georgia's not going down. Georgia's doing better. Yeah. yeah. And LSU's doing pretty good considering. Yeah. And with Brian Kelly there, I think LSU's going to be back to winning nine, LSU nine games at least. LSU will have more talent next year playing AM and than they did last year. Mm-hmm. Yep. And here's the thing about the class, and I'll just end the show with this. LSU, I guess the good thing you can say about this is they got the guys that really wanted to come there. And I know it's yeah. cliche. Oh, mm-hmm. if you don't want to come, don't come. Right. You know? But this is the class of when it ends up 32 guys that truly want it to wear purple and gold. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to keep them united. Yep. And I think that's going to keep them together than the guys that got NIL deals only to go to a college. My philosophy has always been this, Lee. Give me a bunch of three stars that want to be, that bleed purple and gold. More than five stars that. You know, well, the, don't really care I, for as much. I think the future college football are the teams that, that care about each other and that play united. Mm-hmm. If you're united and you're happy and you want to play, go to school and you want to play ball, those teams are now going to be your teams that are going to win from here on out. I mean, look at the 19. It's, it's not going to be the most talented teams anymore. Look at the 19 team. I mean, it wasn't a bunch of – it wasn't a number one recruiting class or anything. It no. wasn't a bunch of five stars all together. Edwards. Clyde, Clyde Edwards. Edwards was a, what, three-star – but they they tried to sign other running backs over Clyde. Yep, I mean Joe Burrow was a long time backup quarterback at Ohio State that wasn't a five star quarterback. I mean yeah. it wasn't a bunch of five stars, but they believed in each other yeah. and they, you know, they really well, bought into it. There are guys that are three stars and two stars that are missed evaluated by media, and media should be evaluating guys anyway. But, um, I've been in it outside of media evaluating working for colleges and. I really believe that if you have a team that's united and they care about one another and they want to go to school and with the new philosophy that Kelly has, I think they're going to beat more talented teams this year. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I would not say just – and I think you did good by saying nine wins possibly. I would Mm -hmm. go go higher than that because Kelly's background is that he's always a close-knit coach Mm -hmm. with his team. Yeah. And he also doesn't want any – uh, individual guys on the team that just care about just them. He wants team before me. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the new philosophy that works in college football. It's going to be different for LSU. It's going to work for them. And if you got a quarterback, you're going to do mm-hmm. good in the SEC. So LSU's yeah. got three really good quarterbacks. The future's really bright. They manage that quarterback situation. They're set at quarterback for the next six, seven years, if and, that. And guess what? Good quarterbacks overcome an OKO line. Mm-hmm. And, Oak, and it overcomes a, a good defense. That's Just watch great. 2019 because LSU had themselves right. a pretty good quarterback then. So we're just telling it like it is today. Um, the class, they salvaged it. The, the portal was great. Uh, they got to get back to signing a lot of high school kids out of Louisiana. 
and not take as many portal guys in the future, but they had to this year. Kelly, you got to no build choice. that fence. You got to build that fence around the boot. Yeah. And if they don't all come back, Jace, it's going to be hurting them in the future because they're going to keep trying to grab other kids. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how Nebraska gets back in, the, in Louisiana. You get three kids from here, mm-hmm. then you get more kids wanting to come. Yep. Bama signs five more Louisiana kids. They get more kids to come because they're going to host them. Yep. And they're going to go, oh, I know a guy from Monroe is there, and I know a guy mm-hmm. from Shreveport is there. Mm-hmm. we got to eliminate that. But if, knock on wood, I wish all these kids success. But if Saban was to retire, I guess that'd probably be the best thing that could happen. Oh, yeah. You. Yep. It's like they know the Wicked Witch is dead, <laughs> right. you know, when that happens. So if he was to retire somehow, then you might get some of those guys back. Mm-hmm. And this might be the first class that they don't see the third year with him. Because mm-hmm. he's 70. I don't know if he'll do 73. Yeah. That'd be kind of tough. I mm-hmm. don't know if he'll do 73 in age. Yeah. He doesn't have to. No. And his wife will probably say, look, let's spend our last 10 years, 15 years, and do and enjoy life. Mm-hmm. Enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he, like you said, he might have three or four more years left and then just say, hey, I need to spend time with my grandchildren, yeah. my family, spend time with the lake I have. Right. You know the money he'll that. never spend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the car dealerships he'll have to sell. Right. You know, but you might see this class finally leave if he retires. Look, if he retires, they're going to leave a lot of those guys. Don't 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 think that that it's Alabama the reason they're going there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Nick uh-huh. Saban. Mm-hmm. All I gotta say is buckle up, uh, Alabama. Once he retires, because it's, it's world, it's going to be interesting to see who. We'll replace him after after that. Well, you would say Jimbo, but if he gets fired at A and M, they're not gonna, not going to hire him. I guess it's still Dabo. Dabo, Dabo yeah, Dabo. that's that's the guy I'm thinking of you know, constantly. He, Dabo played there, and he's from Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And it's sort of like LSU going after an LSU, uh, you know, former player. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to get that former player to come back. Right. So, well, Jace, it was fun. We yeah, went it was. Over. I think we went over again. Oh, yeah. But, hey, it was fun. We got McNeese out. We talked about LSU. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. On Tuesday, we're going to have uh, – actually, we, it's going to play on Wednesday. Right. We're our Madison prep coach, Landry Williams. We're going to mm-hmm. talk about Quincy Wiggins and Chris and all those players. Yep. And on Monday, I'm going to have a show, and we're going to talk about more Louisiana colleges. I'm going to pick two colleges. I'm not going to announce who today, but mm-hmm. we're going to talk about two recruiting classes on Monday – and we'll keep talking about those recruiting classes till we finish on all the schools. Because I know fans of Tulane and Southern and McNeese and all these schools would love to hear about their class. Sure. And uh, since I've watched the kids in state play, I can't talk about the out-of-state kids. But I hope you enjoyed the show. Hope everybody has a great weekend. And me and Jace. Yeah. Thanks for having me on again, Lee. It's been a while. We will see you next week. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.